Two weeks ago, this area was the site of heavy looting and rioting. Now, businesses aren't taking any chances. We've lined up shipping containers in front of our distribution center. That's just to prevent um, or deterrent uh, from any of the public coming in. Adam Bartlett runs the biggest supermarket chain in the country. We're nervous. I think it should be OK, but it's just unpredictable. The security of our town is not safe at the moment. Local police, backed by the AFP, are checking vehicles for weapons and stolen goods from last week's riots. There are concerns today's attempt to oust the Prime Minister could inflame tensions again. It is terrible that businesses were looted and destroyed. But it pales, Mr. Speaker, in comparison to the looting happening at the top, at the expense of ordinary Solomon Islanders. The whole thing is about the leader of the opposition and who else on the other side of the house wanting to be prime minister. That's what it is. You want to sit here? The opposition leader accused the prime minister of doing China's bidding. He is in the service of a foreign power. While the PM accused the opposition of working for Taiwan. The majority of protesters come from the province of Malaita. These people gathered in its capital, Aoki, to watch today's vote. The innocent people of Malaita have been lied to by these agents of Taiwan. Now Malaita is threatening it will push for independence, and that's antagonizing other provinces. It would elevate supremacy of one province to think it has the mandate to think and speak for the country. In the end, the Prime Minister had the numbers needed, winning today's votes 32 to 15 with two abstaining. The big question, though, is how much longer will Australian peacekeepers need to stay to maintain calm and ensure Solomon Islanders can get on with their lives? Evan Osuka, ABC News, Juanara.